SAT, because I'm sure all of you took the SAT. It started when I was a freshman. Um, or basically how important it was. Yeah, very, very stressful. Well, many researchers have um, basically given a lot of information as to why the SAT and ACT should not be involved in uh, college admissions. And today I'm just going to talk about just a few, but some main important ones. So with new data, we know that the SAT and ACT are economically biased. Students do not perform well under stress of the test. GPA has been proven to be a better predictor of college success than the SAT and ACT. And for those reasons, they should no longer require testing for college admissions at all schools. So to begin with, um, how they are biased. Um, they're heavily biased um, due to having higher income families have the opportunity to basically get the tutoring, um, be able to buy those big, heavy uh, SAT books that have like seven tests in them and have the opportunity to study over months rather than just a few hours in class like some um, lower income families do. Um, and according to Kim Alessers' 2019 article, lawsuit claims that SAT and ACT are biased, here's what research says, shows that students with income less than $20,000 scored lowest on the test and those with family above $200,000 scored highest. And this right here just kind of goes to show um, the SAT is mainly built up of the critical reading, math and writing, um, and just right here, like the um, income that they have and the scores that some of them got. And as you can see, as it gets higher, their scores do get higher. Um, so being biased towards wealthier students, that's just one of the main reasons to get rid of it. So I do believe mostly that it's economically biased because um, it affects minority communities stricken with poverty. Again, with the tutoring, being able to buy the books, being able to get that um, higher education rather than lower income students. Um, many research say that it's more of a racial uh, bias, but I do believe that it's um, definitely between income disparity, like between the certain races, so I do believe that it's mostly economically biased. Um, and in Mo Hyman's 2019 article, College Admissions Tests Are a Poor Indicator of College Readiness, she says the SAT and ACT test are a poor indicator of college readiness and a barrier to college access for a diverse student populations. And then again, right here, um, just basically a sample income category that was, I mean, it's a little old, but to 2013, um, as you can see, the scores, the colors from red to black, they kind of get higher as the uh, income gets higher. So not only is it biased, we all know that it is extremely stressful. The importance of the SAT and ACT to many students is very, very high. So why so much weight? Um, many SAT and SAT students, um, when they're taking it, they know that they're offered many benefits, such as scholarships, money, extra money, stuff like that. Um, but this kind of doesn't really benefit the poor because if they're not getting that education or extra material, they're not so much um, being able to get that opportunity to get those scholarships and benefits if they do poor, poorly on it. And according to Ashley Dean's 2019 article, more testing means more stress for teens and there's no solution in sight, shows that one student said, why do tests have to define who we are and how smart we are? The SAT and ICT for most students is basically the remainder of their lives. They believe so. As growing up in high school, we were all prepared for uh, junior year to take this big four hour long test that was going to basically decide our future. Um, and I believe, you know, with one big test, um, that should be what, you know, decides our future. And a lot of students um, believe that, you know, the SAT is evaluation of their smartness. And I do like remember, I know probably plenty of other students remember, as soon as we were done with the SAT, walking around saying, oh, how'd you do? How do you think you did? You know, how stressed were you on this problem? Do you remember this? And then two weeks later, you know, getting that test back and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't do well. And that just very was like distraught for some students, you know, wanting to go to a very well college and thinking that they're not going to be able to get in just because of this one four hour test. In Valerie Strauss's 2013 article, what one college discovered when it stopped accepting AC, SAT and ACT scores show that some good students are bad test takers, particularly under stress, stress, such as when a test may grant or deny college entry and multiple choice tests don't reveal much about a student. 
So considering that you know, one big test shouldn't be what kind of alters a student's um, ability to get into schools, I believe that there are definitely other ways to consider um, evaluating a student. So not only is it biased, not only is it incredibly stressful, but researchers have shown that uh, GPA is a better predictor of success. So the SAT and ACT are definitely um, antiquated, so I believe that they are very kind of outdated. The SAT was actually designed to help low-income students um, basically prove themselves of their smartness and what they were kind of capable of, but like I said from the beginning, some low-income students didn't get that um, kind of availability to, like I said, the big bucks, the tutoring, more education or more hours of education like some higher income students were. So I believe that is no longer necessary. And in a PBS article from 2015, what does the SAT really measure? Shows that the SAT was invented to measure IQ for low income students, but now it does not measure any innate ability, proving it useless. And then right here, um, as you can see, the SAT score can get up to 1600, but they just went up to 1100, and then the GPA. Now while, yes, many students um, who were only getting the 800 on the SAT and a low uh, GPA were in the lower percentile, but there were some students who actually got an 800, but it still had almost a 4.0 and still were in about the 47th percentile. And as you can see, average 900 to 990, um, but with a 4.0 was in the 62 percentile. So not much of uh, the SAT and ACT really matter compared to the GPA. A test score or for your evaluation. I do believe that um, rather than taking someone's, you know, educational like abilities, um, they should rather look at, you know, a GPA rather than just one four hour test score. And according to Sarah Sheffer's article from 2014 shows that high school GPA matters. Um, for your long term evidence of self discipline, intellectual curiosity and hard work, that's what matters most. Your GPA is basically your indicator of success to me, rather than one four hour test. Your GPA is accumulated over four years, that is four years of hard work. For my school, it was 46 credits that you needed to get out of high school. That is a lot of uh, credits. So rather than one test that you study for a few months, this is four years of studying, long nights, test taking, quiz taking, homework, completion, anything. And GPA is definitely something that shows grit and perseverance. So, in Preston Cooper's 2020 article, Should Colleges Abandon SAT Score Requirements? He touches on how researchers have found evidence that standardized test scores such as the SAT and ACT are worse predictors of a student's success in college than other measures such as a high school GPA. So, rather than um, just taking the one test, there are definitely way better ways of determining future skills um, because the SAT, um, if someone does bad and yet they still have a good GPA, that doesn't necessarily mean how well they're going to do in college. So rather than looking at that, to determine their future skills in college, look at the GPA rather than the SAT. So throughout this speech, we learned how it was biased economically, incredibly stressful, and how researchers have proved that GPA is a better predictor of success. We now have a clear understanding of how the SAT is very outdated, um, how being stressful can alter students' scores, and hopefully later on we can guide generations into believing that the SAT and ICT aren't necessarily um, your future. So with new data, we know that the SAT and ACT are economically biased. Students do not perform well under the stress of the test. GPA has been proven to be a better predictor of college success than the SAT and ACT, and for those reasons, there should no longer be required testing college or for college admissions at all schools.